We're talking to the head football coach of the East Tennessee State Buccaneers, Carl Torbush. Signings on recruiting day have just concluded. Uh, I guess the first thing that I wanted to ask you is, you, now that you've been the coach at North Carolina and ETSU, what are the differences between coaching at the, for, I'm going to use the old-fashioned term, the Division 1A and the Division 1AA level? I, I don't think there's really any um, difference. I think the biggest difference probably you uh, on the – FBS level, you're going to see guys that are probably two inches taller than the FCS level. I think the speed is very, very similar. I think maturity is very similar. But uh, obviously you've got uh, most guys are going to want to go FBS if they can. Uh, and all of them can't be recruited by that. You know, we're going to take some guys that are basically, in my opinion, uh, project guys that we feel like they have got to come in here and prove themselves that may be – uh, just to give you a for instance, I don't think he'd mind me using it, using his name, Zach Hansey. If he was uh, six foot two, he'd had everybody in the country after him. And because he's five eleven, a lot of people didn't feel like he's quite tall enough. But I can also say Dre Bly, when I was at North Carolina, you know, we we talked for weeks about was he tall enough to be a cornerback. Obviously, he was because he went on and made All Pro about yeah. six or seven years. So, you know, it's not an exact science, and we're not going to let inches determine whether we sign a guy or not. I think a lot of it's got to do with his heart and. Uh, you know, we want to make sure if they'll play hard, if they can run fast, they got athleticism. Height is not quite as big a factor on our level as another level, but I, I think that's the biggest difference probably is the height factor to a degree, and sometimes athleticism, obviously. You, the, uh, but if you look at it on the NFL every year in the draft now, there's probably going to be a third of the guys that are drafted or make teams that are not FBS players. Mm -hmm. Sure. And the development and so on. Now, one of the things, we had Woody Woodenhofer on the mm -hmm. show a few weeks ago, and he we talked about different coaching styles and recruiting a player to the FBS now versus the FCS now mm -hmm. level. And one of the things he said was, when he was at Southeast, we went after the same player. No, he probably wouldn't get him. But maybe we'd have a contact where if it didn't work out for him at the FBS school, he could transfer to us. Or maybe we'd get lucky or something. Is that uh, – I know you've just given us a lot of uh, well, comments, but is that another philosophy you have? I, not not really. Okay. Uh, and the reason I say it, if we spend all our money recruiting FBS players, then we're not sure. going to have the money to recruit the FCS players, which are the ones we got to play with to start with. I mean – Obviously, if it's a guy that we recruited that goes to an FBS school, such as a Tennessee or Vanderbilt or North, wherever it may be, uh, if they get there and they're not happy, uh, then obviously we'd take them on a rebound. But we're not we're not going to take a ton of transfers or junior college guys because we don't know as much about them. And most of them that are leaving one school for another, uh, there there's a reason behind it. So we got to make sure first of all that they're fit here. But uh, you know, in, you know, I, I'm a guy that uh, if a guy signs a pro baseball contract and uh, he was an excellent high school football player. We'd like to at least know where he's at because if he doesn't make it in pro baseball two years down the road, maybe he wants to come back and play football, and that's a guy that we'd like to get. Uh, obviously, you know, there's some guys we'll recruit to the end that at the last minute an FBS school will sign them, and mm -hmm. that's if they get there and after the first year not happy there or not playing there or whatever, then, you know, we're going to be interested in them. And that's not to say we're not ever going to take one, but we don't recruit with those means because, like I say, you'd run out of money before you got mm -hmm. to recruit mm -hmm. the players and bring the players in that you were truly interested in, and then then you can't recruit what you need to recruit. Okay. Uh, I noticed one thing about your class right here. There are no specialists. Now, do you have kind of a Lou Holtz philosophy of, well, the specialists are going to be walk-ons, or did it just not work out to get no, a specialist this uh, year? we recruit a couple, and it didn't work out. We'd like to have uh, got one of them. We didn't, uh, but we're not just going to take one to take one. We've got good kickers on campus that uh, are still young. Uh, so if we, if we bring one in, we need to fill in our heart that he's better than what we're playing with or we're not going to take them. But uh, it wasn't our intentions not to sign one this year it just didn't work out that we could get the one we wanted now i know you've tried to get a lot of four-year players in but there are a couple of community college players in this uh, class came cooper is one of them to play safety is he right now number one on the depth chart to replace ryan powers or yeah, too early i mean it, you got to earn your position that's i think all coaches are like that i'm not ever going to bring one in say you're a starter you got to prove you're a starter now i will tell one if you play like i think you can play and do what I think you can do, you should have a chance to start, but whether you start or not, that's your situation. I mean, I can't – I'm not ever going to tell a kid that comes in that he's got an automatic job, but that's not fair to the kids that's already there. Uh, they've been there, they've worked, they've been in the weight program, they've done what they need to do. 
Uh, now, if that guy coming in beats them out, which that's the reason obviously we signed them, I tell all our guys, the guys we recruit, I don't care for junior college or high school guys, we're recruiting that they are better than you are. It's your job to make sure they can't beat you out. Mm-hmm. If, we, if we don't do that, then we never get better. So, you know, our job is to continue to recruit, recruit better than what you have. That way the ones that are already there get better, and the ones that are trying to take their spot have got uh, something in their heart that, you know, they're going to compete against them. The departure of your offensive line coach, what kind of an impact did that have in your recruiting? I don't think any, and I'm not, you know, Eric Losey did an absolutely wonderful job for us, and he had a great job opportunity at Southern Mississippi for the guy named Jay Hobson, who was the head coach at uh, Alcorn State when he was an assistant there. So, you know, it was a situation, in my opinion, at Eric's age that he needed to make that move because it's FBS level and it's a good good football school and a good football league. But uh, I don't think it made any impact one way or another whether – he was here or not here. I think our coaches still did a good job of recruiting three excellent, three excellent offensive linemen who you know could play anytime we've been here. And we're getting in, we're in the process right now of hiring offensive line. We'll announce that probably next week or so. Next week, who's he going to be? You have to wait till next week. Really? Absolutely. Oh, jeez. Hey, one thing I did want to ask: Did any of your recruits, or did it ever come up the Tristan Retke situation when you were recruiting? He's the here? the Tristan Retke situation. He's the knucklehead that went to the Black Lives Matter uh, rally with a gorilla mask. I just was curious if this had ever been brought up. No, I've never I've never heard that mentioned. And if it was mentioned, we would attack it head on because that's not what ETSU is about. That's not what this area is about. That's uh, one individual being an individual yeah. and the same way on the other side you know we're we're going to recruit people i don't care what color they are for uh, the type of young man they are the type of person they are type of student they are type of athlete they are so uh but it, did that make any imp- no I, I never heard it mentioned uh, I, I never had a, heard another school use it against us in any way and like i say if they had we just made it head on like we try to do everything else the guys here look pretty good on paper. They always do. Uh, but I want to go the other route. If you had a fear about this recruiting class, what would it be? Right now, there are no fears. I, if you ask any college coach in America, uh, <laughs> if they say something bad about the recruiting class, then they've done a bad job of recruiting. I mean, I feel strongly that if you look at the 100, 100 college football teams, if you asked each and every one of them, they say, they're going to say that they had an outstanding recruiting class. And... Like I say, we'll find out in two years. We'll find out who had great recruiting classes, good recruiting classes, and classes that were not quite as good. All right. We're talking to Carl Torbush here on Tri-City Sports Now back after this.